Tämä edustatilaisuus on tarkoitus kestää puoli kuuteen. Että on tuolla niin tunti aikaa kysellä Frank Zappalta ja Madison Mansonilta, mitä te haluatte, mutta mieluummin ei ihan mitä ihan tylsiä hommia, että sitten voimme, ettei, ettei niin kapellimestari me turhaa kipsiä. Ensimmäisen Mothers of Invention kokoonpanonsa Zappa perusti vuonna 1965. Sen jälkeen niitä on ollut lukuisia. Zappa pitää miehensä ja musiikkinsa koko ajan pienessä liikkeessä. Tätäkään ryhmää kapelimestari ei ole suunnitellut pitkäikäiseksi. Helsingissä Zappalaiset etupäässä soittivat ja osoittivat musiikillisen taituruutensa. Laulun osuus jäi erittäin pieneksi. Sen sijaan joukkueen uusimmalla levyllä Overnight Sensation on sanallinen antipinnalla. Lehdistötilaisuus oli vailla vertaansa, sanoi Zappa. Maestro istui ja odotti turhaan. Kukaan ei vaivautunut kysymään. Tiukka valokuvaajien muuri räiskytti valojaan, mutta muuta ei juuri tapahtunut. Tilaisuudesta tehty kuvanauha pääsee Mothersien historiaa esittelevään elokuvaan. Vaan kuinka sitten kävikään? Tuliko tyhmiä kysymyksiä? Mostly it's just people looking at me. What do you think about the way people categorize music nowadays? Is it useful or necessary? Yeah, I guess it is necessary. For whom? For people who don't know anything about music. There are different styles of music, you know. But there's no reason to assume they can't be blended together. Uh, well, how did you get interested in all kind of political and social features about which things you started to make records and so on well when the mothers first got together there was no real political music in the united states <clears throat> i didn't think there was very much elsewhere either so uh, in our first three albums there was a lot of social commentary and a lot of people didn't like it because they didn't want to hear that stuff they would rather hear songs that went baby baby So we threw in a few baby babies for them. So you found a quite new field and new audience. Yeah, there was a new audience for it. It wasn't a large audience, but they were interested. What was your relationship to the theater at that time when you began with the mothers? Um, I always thought that it was an interesting medium to explore with a musical group, <coughs> a group that would also act out the uh, events that were supposed to take place in the theater. And we worked in a theater in 1967 for about five months before we came to Europe for the first time. But nowadays you have paid less attention to this theater type of performances. Uh, why did you do that? And well, it... if I could find a group that had uh, the ideal membership, we'd be able to do both. That is, play complicated music and also do theater. But unfortunately, the music that I've written right now is so complicated that the people who can play it are not very theatrical. <laughs> so, and it's also uh, hard to do fancy stuff on stage when you're playing that many notes. Mm -hmm. And this season, it's mostly a musical band. Mm -hmm. Well, have you decided to leave those political and socially critical things totally? No, not necessarily. I'd say that the commentary is still there in the music. Mm -hmm. What would, what would be the most interesting topic right at this moment if you would like to make something political again? Well, there are plenty of obvious topics, but uh, that's the problem, you know, that we, when you start thinking about social commentary or political uh, lyrics, um, you can't do anything subtle. You always have to do something really obvious, you know, and then that's no challenge. Mm. When we first started doing that, th nobody else was doing it, you know, and, and after a couple of years, a lot of people started doing it, and uh, I didn't feel that it was necessary for me to do it anymore in an obvious way. How about the new coming of old rock and roll music? What do you think about the commercial success of that kind of music? Well, we already did that too, but I guess we did it too early. <laughs> but you are not going to do it again? No. How much time do you spend usually in preparing maybe a 75-minute show? <laughs> we rehearse. We rehearse all the time. Every day before we play, we rehearse. And before. For we, and how we, long time? 
one mm. month. Oh yeah, we'll we'll rehearse. Uh, well, before this tour, we rehearse for three weeks, four days a week, five hours a day. Mm. To what extent do your fellow musicians take part in planning and rehearsing the the performance? Well, with this particular band, they just um, do what I tell them because they aren't too uh, theatrically oriented. It was a little bit different with uh, Mark and Howard, you know, because they had already done some funny things on stage, you know, and so they had some ideas, and I would let them do the things that they felt natural doing. Have you maybe further plans in making movies? Yeah, I'm working on one right now. What, what kind of a movie is it, may I ask? A monster movie. A monster movie? Mm -hmm. And are you maybe going to make experiments with a larger musical works like Lumpy Gravy, for instance? Mm, one day. It's but, very expensive. Mm. And it's also very hard to um, get cooperation from large numbers of musicians. Have you ever been invited to the White House? And if you have, <laughs> would you go? I have not been invited. But if I was invited, I would go. You would? Sure I would. Wouldn't you? I would. Wouldn't, wouldn't you go in there just to go, come on? Right. Sure. What a, just to walk in there and say, what am I doing here? <laughs> That's the silliest thing I ever heard of. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. Okay.